Well, hello again. In this example, you will practice the proper identification of boundary conditions for use in the double integration method for developing deflection equations. We will look at this particular beam, but you're going to notice right off that we've got two different scenarios here. First scenario is where the coordinate system for both of our beam segments, here's beam segment number one, beam segment number two, both coordinate systems originate at the same location. But then we're going to see how we describe things differently if each segment has a different coordinate system. So pay attention here to what the valid domain is for each of the segments. So from 0 to L over 2, L over 2 to L. Whereas down here, because each one starts at the end of a member, they're both valid on the range from 0 to L over 2. So let's look more closely at case number one. We will start by sketching the deflected shape. That runs out straight here because there's no load on span BC. And what we want to do is we want to take a look at this deflected shape and start describing any places where we already know what the displacement is. So look here at point A. We know that the vertical displacement is zero. At point B, we know that the vertical displacement is zero. Now one of the difficulties we have here is that we do not know the slope anywhere on this beam. But what we can do is we can look at the rotation on both sides and we can acknowledge that theta on both sides is the same. And because of that we should be able to now write boundary conditions based upon this. So let's look at segment AB, get the boundary conditions for that. We would then say y at a value of x1 equals 0, so that's looking at point A, we know that the vertical displacement is 0. We also know the vertical displacement at the end of segment AB, so that's defined at L over 2, we know that to be 0. So we've got two boundary conditions for segment AB. We now need two boundary conditions for segment BC. We know the displacement at point B. So look at this. Y, and now since we're talking about segment 2, I will put the X sub 2 on there. But notice where the origin is. The origin is still over at point A. So to describe point B, that is at L over 2. We know the displacement there is equal to 0. The last thing we need to do is sketch a relationship between the rotations that are existing there at point B. So theta, where x1 is equal to L over 2, so that's point B, describing point B, is equal to the same rotation in segment 2 at point B. And as long as those rotations are the same, we can use that as our boundary condition. We know they're the same because there's no way for it to change slope on either side of that. Let's look at our second condition that we will use to describe here. I'm going to go ahead and get the deflected shape sketched in here again. And once again, note that these are locations where we actually know the displacement. And then also, we know that the rotation is the same on both sides. So in a very similar fashion for member AB, we can get a couple of these things sketched. So y, x1 equals 0, so at point A, that's what I've just described, we know the displacement there is 0. y at point B, that is also equal to 0. Now let's pay attention before we jump into the next segment, let's make sure we remember that this is my origin over here now. So if I want to describe the displacement at point B, I would have to say y at x2 equals L over 2. We know that displacement is equal to 0. Well here's the thing we need to be cautious of here, and it only arises when we are talking about rotations. This is a right-handed coordinate system, and in a right-handed coordinate system this is the direction of positive rotation. 
this is a left-handed coordinate system and positive rotation is in this direction. So while we acknowledge down here that theta is the same on both sides, those thetas are being described by opposite coordinate systems. And so this is what we get. We get theta at x1 is equal to L over 2, and so that's describing point B, is equal to the theta of x2 equals to L over 2. That's describing point B. They're equal in magnitude, but they're not equal in sign, and that's because of the opposite sign conventions that were used for that. So that would have to have a negative in front of it. So we have four boundary conditions, which is all we need for two segments. That concludes this example. As always, it's a great day for studying structures.